Good morning and welcome back to Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. There is a lot going on in the financial markets uh, on the data front, but what's trending is gold. Now gold hit all-time highs and now we have been discussing that for the past two days. But what's interesting is that currencies otherwise have remained range-bound with no major movement in the pairs. Yesterday, US had its ISM services PMI number which came in the expansionary territory, but there are some interesting details to that as well. Uh, good morning, JK. What's your take on the recent moves in the market? Uh, how are you reading the ISM numbers? Good morning, Swaraj. Yes, as you put it, uh, actually, it's a lot going on in uh, most of the financial market. So I say most because uh, the currency market where we are you know, more concerned is still not showing any life and uh, it continues to be uh, very much uh, range bound. Among global events yesterday, final reading of the composite PMI surveys from SNP garnered some attention as Eurozone final reading was revised higher. Uh, although it was still in the contraction territory, uh, PMI uh, was the highest in eight months in Europe, indicating near stabilization of the euro area with service sector activity showing growth for the first time since July of uh, last year. Uh, looking ahead, we have testimony of uh, Mr. Powell to the US Congress tonight at 8.30 p.m., where questions will uh, surround how long the chairman expects the uh, rates to be kept at current 23 year high of 5.25 to 5.5%, even as inflation has dropped from the high of 9.1%. So the mixed bag of data from US recently can make it tricky for him to uh, you know, change his path uh, quickly uh, because uh, he has been more inclined on the hawkish side due to employment uh, reading, uh, uh, you know, very strong. Uh, you know, they, uh, as, I, as I was speaking about the mixed data and as you mentioned as well, the ISM services activity uh, in the US, uh, in the US was uh, lower and the details show that both employment and prices paid were uh, you know uh, lower in fact employment uh, fell into the contraction territory and the uh, prices paid dropped by as much as uh, 6 points uh, these uh, also were followed by a very big drop in the uh, factory orders data um, again, you know, showing that the manufacturing is uh, uh, facing quite a bit of uh, challenges uh, in the U.S. as well. So this is the context in which we have to look at uh, Powell's uh, testimony today. He is uh, more concerned about inflation not hitting the target and uh, employment being higher. But several other indicators, including the leading indicators, which have been hinting at several times in the past, uh, have been uh, on the uh, lower side. Uh, as we head into the crucial jobs data on uh, February, uh, which you know, uh, Powell also will be you know very keen to look at. We have some advanced indicators in the form of Joel's data showing quits rate as well as job openings for January. Uh, that will be announced today, uh, along with the ADP private job roles, which had surprised to the downside last month. Uh, we, in fact, we had almost all the initial indicators on employment, including PMA surveys, hinting at falling employment, but the NFP showed a big jump for everyone's surprise. Though details showed that it was mainly due to rise in uh, part-time employment, so we'll be very keen to see how the market, uh, uh, you know, uh, how the data comes out today and the market's reaction to that as well. Now, sometimes big market moves are not accompanied by a simultaneously big event triggers. It happened with gold in the last few days, which rose more than $100 per ounce, even as the yields stayed more or less in the same band. Yesterday, we saw equity players suddenly dumping shares big time, although economic data was somewhat weaker, but that did not justify a slump of over 1% in the major indices. If anything, uh, to me, it indicates some market fears from the upcoming events this week and the weight of a huge positioning at historical highs. Tech sector, of course, was affected by some negative corporate news, particularly Apple, whose sales in China had dropped by as much as 24%. The fact that market across, you know, including Asia, excluding Japan, and then EM and uh, European shares were down earlier in the day before US data does indicate a common theme of discomfort with the current valuations with policy uncertainty uh, looming. Uh, gold swiftly hit an all-time high about 2140 uh, USD per bounce after rallying nearly 8% in the last three weeks. Again, this looks more like a risk aversion trade as we see, you know, the platinum and palladium, which usually move in tandem, have actually fallen this time, which is an indication of lower demand from key sectors of economies. So we really have to assess economy more uh, closely than inflation in the uh, coming days. Uh, the gold's rally and the BTC, rather the, uh, you know, the Bitcoin, went to new highs yesterday, although they retreated later, uh, 
uh, are both massive and they indicate uh, dollars being sold to acquire these assets. Is this a precursor for a general dollar fall or for a larger risk aversion that is building up? A conviction on the latter can add up if we see USC and fall, but a general dollar fall, we need more dovish clues from uh, Powell today. Uh, uh, although nothing much is happening, we cannot uh, uh, take our eyes off the rupee. Uh, it did nothing yesterday uh, that was different, uh, stuck in a narrow range. Uh, the slight weakening of dollar index having little impact uh, where the strong flows and central bank actions have governed its movement. Going forward, we do believe that the break of 80 to 70 indicates central banks comfort with strength in INR, particularly if it is accompanied by dollars overall weakness or a break of uh, 8320 or uh, if there were to be any uh, global strength emerging due to risk aversion or a black swan event uh, now these are looking like you know unrealistic uh, expectations uh, from the rupee but uh, we have seen in the past that after remaining in a very narrow band for a long time rupee sudden suddenly has a burst of activity trading interest of course has all but vanished from speculators also because the forward premium carry is far less attractive now uh, on the domestic economic news, HSBC, India Composite PMI was revised downward to 60.6 in February uh, from a preliminary reading of 61.5. Uh, paces of expansion were broadly similar, but uh, uh, you know manufacturing lag, uh, logged an acceleration while services in a slowed down. That's quite uh, surprising, and it's, and it's different from the global uh, you know trend as well. Uh, Near-term influences for the rupee can come from U.S. employment data on Friday. Uh, with implications for Fed rate cuts for, or the financial year and related flows, which historically pushes the rupee higher. Have a good day and week. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And just uh, quickly summarizing, we had the final reading of the composite PMI. Uh, from Europe, uh, the PMIs were revised higher, uh, though it was still in the contractionary territory, but it's at, uh, it's, it's at eight-month high. Um, we have Powell's testimony tonight. Uh, and of course, uh, let's quickly see also what the ISM data showed, uh, factory orders, prices paid, and and, un, uh, and employment was lower, indicating some stress in the U.S. economy. And uh, tonight we have the JOLTS uh, data, ADP payrolls, uh, which will indicate markets how the U.S. labor market uh, is positioned. Uh, gold has risen more than $100 per ounce in the last few days. Major uh, equity indices have also slumped over 1%. Uh, tech sector is facing trouble not just in U.S., but also in China. Uh, so the so that that's some some sort of fear which is going on in the markets, which is why we saw a rise in gold, but also Bitcoin. Bitcoin also hit all time highs, so that's something interesting which is going on. Uh, rupee, we were stuck in a narrow range. Uh, strong flows plus central bank actions continue to drive the markets. Um, and as J.K. funnily mentioned, that uh, break of eighty two seventy or eighty three twenty, which may seem unrealistic now. But these are some levels uh, where if market does break, we might see some further moves. That's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.